Every good design must look unique and convey an idea. Tunji from Caesar Graphics, welcome to my how to use background series. This was one of the design that was posted for me to critique during the Creatives Academy design review. We have so many things affecting the success of this design, but I only focus on the visual part because of time. The composition looks dull. The illustration is common and not strong. It would have been nice if the characters are backing each other to depict difference. How you can make your illustration interesting is when you display what is not common. I'm going to show you my solution to this. I'll be using Adobe Illustrator to achieve this. All right, so since the project is talking about relationships, so I'm going to get a heart shape from Google and uh, we are going to redraw the heart shape with Illustrator. All right, so I'm going to switch my screen now for you guys to see. Then I'm going to click on Google image. And I'm going to type heart vector. I already have it here. Okay, so um, let's see. I think I prefer. You know what? Well, let's just go with this. I prefer this. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, I think this is not bad. Okay, let's go with this. So I'm going to go with this, okay? So I'm going to drag this and drop into Illustrator. So I'll click on File and I'll select New. So for this project, I'm going to use 800 by 800 pixels and I'm going to call this difference. And I'll leave every other setting the way they are and click on the Create button. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag and drop the heart shape here like so. And I'm going to lock the layer. You know, create a new layer because we need to redraw this. So I'll select the pen tool, start from let's see here. And I'll go to here like so. Let's back to selection tool and then. Make this work. And this is going to be your fill. Alright, then I'll go back to the pen tool again. Here, I'll give the escape key. So we need to fine tune this. So I'm going to hide this layer. So we need to fine tune this. Bring this select here. All right, so I know some of you are wondering why didn't I just use the normal heart shape? Okay, so the reason why I did not do that is because you know it's always good to make content on your project look different from the normal way you know people are used to it. So when you do this, it will you know make your project look interesting to people. But when you when you keep using the same you know image that people are used to, the same shape that people are used to, you know it won't create that surprise look. Them. So, whenever you are giving a project to work on and you notice that you are using the same shape that people are used to, it's always good to tweak it in such a way that it will look different from what people are used to, okay? Let me move this down. So, then I'm going to add more, you know, stroke to this. I'm sorry, I'm going to start the width too. And I'm going to move, so I'm going to push this side. 
Push this dog down. So, I'll close this. Let's see. Make this side wider. So, right, then uh, put this this out. So, for this side, gently move this. So, right, this is good. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is. I'm gonna scale this down a bit. I'm position this here. Hold and hold and drag to make a copy of the shape. And I'm gonna right click, select transform, and select um, rotate here. And I'm gonna select 180. Alright, then I select the OK button. So now I'm gonna move, move this and position this somewhere around here. Like so. Let's do some here. So, and then I'm going to um, select the two shapes and go to object and click on expand appearance. Now, the reason why it's always good to hit the expand up to you know, expand your shape is when you scale your shape down, it will affect the stroke. Of your shape so it's better you convert it to a fill object so that when you reduce or when you scale the shape down you're still going to get you're still going to get the same width all right so i'm going to i'm going to unite the two objects by clicking here and now we can now you know fine tune this side of the shape so i'm going to select the direct selection tool and just this there but better still let's just use the to, to just delete some of the points. Okay, so I'll use the direct selection tool to just you know until this. So we can do this. See so. all these points. this yeah, so this is good now i'm going to scale this down and i'm going to add my text all right so but before i add my text i need to add color to this so i'm going to use the gradient tool i'm going to use the gradient tool to do this so then i'll go to the gradient setting here and click so as to uh, activate the gradient tool on the object so i'm going to just drag this like so and I'm going to click on this color here. So I'm going to use yellow. And for this side, I'm going to use blue. Okay, in blue. The reason why I'm using these two colors is because when you look at the color wheel, these are the two colors that complement each other. And since the title on this artwork is saying different. It's always good to use something that will connect with what the title of the artwork is saying. I know, you know, some of you are also wondering, so why didn't you use red? Like what I said previously, doing what people are already used to is not how you can, you know, make your project look interesting. Blue is another color that you can use when you're talking about relationship or something that got to do with love because blue signifies trust. So now... The next thing we're going to do now is to add our text. So I'm going to move this and position it here. All right. And I'm going to copy my text. I'm going to copy the title. All right. And I'm going to paste this. And the font I'm going to use is going to be Sacre... Sacramento. Yeah, that's it. Then I'm gonna scale this big like so and position it here. Then I'm still gonna use the same shade of blue again. And this time I'm gonna move this somewhere around here. This should be here. Alright. Okay. So, you know what? Let's just create our margin. 
All right, it's always good to create margin when you are, you know, placing your text. So I'm gonna move this here. And I'm gonna bring out the ruler, which is Control R. And drag this here. Push this here. All right, and move this here. Here, so. okay, and I'm gonna delete this. And this should be here, All right? Then I'm gonna scale this a little bit more. Bring the rider, just rider like so, and I'm gonna make this my big regular. So it is good, and this should be somewhere around here. And so let's go this down. I'm gonna make this bold. Okay. So make this really so just close the track in a bit because you know this letter is close to the F, so I'm just gonna reduce the tracking. Remove this here. And I'm going to keep this little gray. Like so, and put the address. Okay, let's just put the mark. All right. Let's put the date first. Okay. Put the date. What's this? Make this a little bit bigger. Make sure this here. Control V to paste it. So I'm going to zoom out with Control minus and I'm going to scale this down because we need to take out that white background from the logo. So then I'm going to select image trace and I'm going to select expand and go to object to select on group. And now if I do this now, you see we don't have that white background anymore. So I'm going to scale this down now. The reason why it's always good for you not to use the color from the um, brand is because that color on this brand is a um, color with high contrast. And when we have that color only on um, this, it will, you know, call more attention more than some of the more important information on the design. So that's why it's always good for you to change the color of the social media logo that you're using on your project. Okay, so I'm going to select this now and change the color to this. And I'm going to zoom out. Okay, and I'm going to copy the time, which is 9 a.m. I'm going to paste that here. Oh, you know what? Let's just leave it as regular, okay? Regular is fine. So I'm gonna scale this and do it like so, and hit enter. And I'm gonna close that. Like so and then change the color to blue. And this should be somewhere around here. Like so, so I need to make sure this is well aligned. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna move this out. So let's see if I move this here. So and 
this is fine. So if I hide my guides now, we are going to have, let me hide my PC, right? So hide guide here, and this is what we have. So our background is looking too plain. So what we're going to do is to make copies of the shape that we drew, which is the heart shape, and just play around, you know, positioning it on our background. I'm going to use this shade of color. This should be here. So, this should be here. Okay. And then we can just have the logo somewhere around here. So, let's use this. So we can just put the logo here. So we can just make this bold. This is this here. So we can color the same color with this. Right. So um, we need to put this. You know the shapes in a group, all right. So I'm going to hit Ctrl G on my keyboard and I'll draw a rectangle shape here and hold Shift and select the shapes that you just group together and hit Ctrl 7 to put that in, you know, that um, shape that we just drew. All right, now for some of you that are wondering, okay, Caesar, why do we have this, you know, shape like this? So, like I said previously, the title is talking about difference, all right? And I want it to look like um, two different hats coming together. And that's the reason why I decided to position the two hats, you know, um, opposite each other, all right? Because if I rotate this, now you see that it's still going to form the same shape, all right? You see that? You see, I have the same look of the hat. I'm going to do it again. And then you have this. So you get my point. You know what? I think I still need to just move, you know, this. I'll just make it bigger. All right, because um, as it is there, it's not really looking nice like the way I want it. So now I'm going to, you know, um, draw another ruler. Like so, you know, let's just make our ruler visible. Let's make our guides visible, right? So I, I'm going to position this here, but you know, let's just create the guides first. Because I want to create a new guide, right? And say I'm um, guide, and I'm going to drag this here, like so, and select everything here, and press hold on shift, and it's here. Now, if I draw another guide here, you see that. Everything is still well aligned like the way we had it previously, like the way we had it before. Oops. So, let's here. so and then you see we have you know, this. Alright? So I'm gonna stop here. This is not the only solution to design project like this. Feel free to come up with other concepts if you are redesigning this. But remember, your design must convey an idea. Thank you for watching today's tutorial. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you have not. Click the notification bell so you won't miss my upcoming tutorials. Share, like, and comment on this video. Peace.